come alone. Please do not come alone. Do your friends a favor. We're going to be passing out a whole bunch of flyers on your way out for everyone to take quite a few. Get them out to your school. Do not come alone. You are not going to want to miss what God's going to do on Thursday. But that's Thursday. Uh, the Bible says to let tomorrow take care of itself. But today we have a special guest. Uh, we have uh, one of my family members that I love very much. And I, there's, none, there's no one else like this. Uh, uh, he's crazy, uh, cool, smart, intelligent. No, I'm not preaching. It's not me. It's someone else. Um, but please help me welcome Rudy Gracia Jr. to the stage. To the stage, skis. Love you, Norm. So, how you guys doing in one-to-one? That's awesome. Got Anjali, did you get it? Awesome. Okay. Switch. I'll be sick, Jay. Hey guys, I'm I, I really am excited to be here right now. Um I don't know if I could be more excited. I as you guys uh may know or may not know, uh maybe you haven't seen me around in uh for a little while or for a few weeks or for I don't know how long it's been but um but it's not you know it's not for any reason that's not uh the right reason you know it's 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 a matter of you know what it is and what it isn't and the truth is that I have been um in a position just where I need to take care of my family in a certain way and scheduling kind of like a night shift kind of thing and and it's been hard for me and also you guys no, I like to be transparent with you guys. I also um, have been going on some kind of spiritual journey. Um, and sometimes the journeys that God takes you on, you need to go by yourself. That's a lesson that uh, Normandy actually taught me. And he's been telling me that since I was about 16 years old. He always told me, listen, whatever you're going through, you might not have friends to go with you. Or don't be surprised, you know, I'm just quoting some qu Normandy quotes. Don't be surprised if, if you know... Your friends can't go with you wherever you need to go. Don't be surprised if you look around and it looks like you have no friends. God has something specific for you. And sometimes you're going to need to go slay your own, as we call it, our 300 wolf. You guys remember the movie 300? That the young boy had to go out and kind of prove his manhood. And he had to kill the wolf and bring back, you know, the, the head. Um, and he had to do that by himself. And so I've been on a kind of spiritual journey that I, I felt that I needed to go on by myself and having cheerleaders on that journey wouldn't help the journey and um, trying to bring people along with me wouldn't help the journey it's one of those journeys that you feel you could barely make anyway and so any weight whether it's good weight or bad weight and I guess if you could say it like that it's it's still weight and you need to go uh, you need to go it alone sometimes so I don't say that to be a lone wolf or a lone ranger I just, those are two weird examples I just say <laughs> lone ranger um, I say that because um, it's the best way I can interpret and explain to you guys something that I'm dealing with right now. You guys know that um, the time that we have been going through as a family, and I know you guys have been right there with us, is a time that you never expect and is a time that you never desire. And, uh, you know, you, I know that you guys know, but my mom has been uh, very sick for the past, I think, over two months now. I kind of lost track of days and time um and it's 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 a crazy experience it's a crazy trial it's a crazy uh boot camp or training that looks like a prison and um and god is bringing us through and my mom is getting better and she will get better and she will be better than she ever was before and that's what I believe. And I will say that in front of a few hundred people. And I'll say that in front of thousands. And I'll say that in front of the world. Because as I've said before, it's not my faithfulness that's on the line. It's not what Rudy has to say um, is going to be put to the test. This is God's word at test. This is his faithfulness, his trueness, his, um, his words. I mean, the Bible says that heaven and earth shall pass and his words will never pass. So it is his faithfulness um, that I am relying on. And that's why I can come here and say it with all um, certainty and as big a faith as, as I've been able to have. So 
Um, first order of business, uh, I want us all to stand up for a second. I want us to pray for my mom. And, um, and right now she's actually watching online. I'm sure she is, hopefully, unless she didn't want to. Um, but I'm pretty sure she's watching online. So mom, just want to tell you that I love you. I'll see you in a little bit after this. And one-to-one sailors wants to pray for you and pray that God would carry you through um, the moment that you're in right now. So if you guys would just extend your hands, you know, to wherever in the spirit my mom is in front of you. Could it be before, or behind you, or anywhere. But let's pray for her. Thank you, God. Um, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you because you have given us the right to sonship. You have given us the right to the claims on health and forgiveness. That without you and your son Jesus don't exist. And, and Father, we claim those for ourselves. We, we put on the clothing of Jesus and, and we come to you and we say, Father, make all things new. Do what you're good at, Father. We are not... God, we are not questioning your motives or your permissiveness or your presentness. Father, we are invoking your omnipotence and your omniscience. We are invoking who you are. We are invoking what you've promised us. We tell you, we stand before you, God, Father, and we say we are expecting you to do what you promised. And we will keep expecting and we will keep waiting patiently until we one day rise and we sing a new song. And it's in Jesus' name we pray for my mother's health and recuperation. Nothing natural. Father, something supernatural. We ask you that the spiritual life that is in Christ Jesus be inside her. And when that happens, sickness has no choice but to leave. Her body has no choice but to be made whole. Father, we ask for complete and total redemption, which is forgiveness of sins and healing of our bodies, minds, spirits, and souls. We believe this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you too, bruh. So, I'm going to get right into this. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a warning. I've never taken this message for a test drive. You guys are the test drive. Um, And it's something that has been stirring in my spirit for about a month. And I think maybe a month ago, I told Normandy, Norm, um, I'm going out of town this one week. Um, I, I feel a message coming on. I didn't quite have it yet. I feel this big message. It, it doesn't feel, it's not a normal message to me. It's something bigger. It means something more to me. And maybe it will mean something more to the young people of our generation. And I said, I want to share it with one-to-one first. They, they have to get like the the... The true, the real, the VH1 uncut edition. They have to get this true. So I, I give you guys the warning because this message will be uh, something or, or something like I've never done or nothing like I've ever done. Um, I never have really notes to, to share a message with you guys. Uh, the people that are closest to me know that sometimes the way, it's either the way God works with me or the way I allow God to work with me. I usually come up with messages like 20 minutes before, 30 minutes before. If I'm really feeling like holy and sanctified, maybe two hours before. But this has been working on me for a month. And I come up here usually with zero notes and I have, I don't know, maybe 12, 13 pages. And so it's not really a preaching, it's more of a teaching. Um, and I guess we're just going to get right into it because I don't, I don't know how long it's going to take, but I need you guys to, um, I need you guys to really zone in. Like, I need you guys to try to capture as much of it as you possibly can. So please, please, needless to say, forget any distraction, nothing distract you, not, uh, uh, something situational or circumstantial. Let it not distract you because... We're about to get into some serious stuff. And to start off, I, I want to start off with this. Uh, I want us to get into the right mood. I want everybody to close their eyes. I want nobody looking around. Now, I want you to imagine a friend. A friend that you love very much. And this friend is walking along a path called life. The path called life. At a certain point along this path, your friend comes to a fork in the road. Here, hundreds of different roads branch out in all directions. Your friend must keep going, and he can only choose one road to go down. 
The roads would never again cross, and they definitely did not all lead to the same place. It turns out your friend chooses the wrong road. And not just that, but has continued along this wrong road for some time now. You must know that roads will never again cross, and it is impossible to skip over or jump from one road to the next as they are out of sight and out of reach. Assuming that you love your friend very much and you indeed do want the best for him or her, what is the best advice you could give your friend? I want you to think about it for a second. What is the best advice you can give your friend? You got got it? You can open your eyes. So... I'm not going to ask, we don't, we don't really have time for that, but I imagine that most of the answers in this room are very similar. And the core of what the right answer is, because there is a right answer to this, if you really do love your friend, is this. You need to tell your friend, you need to get to the right road, even if it means turning back. Even if it means going back to the crossroad. Do we agree? All right. No need to clap. Do you agree? You see, sometimes the first step to the right road is a step backwards. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes the first step to the right road is a step backwards. Okay, now what's the point? For tonight's message, we're going to go back to the beginning, back to the start, the original reasons and meanings of what we believe. Understand this before I even start. These truths we will discuss have been stirring in me, as I told you before, and indeed have changed me. The truth will set you free, is what the Bible says. And I wouldn't be sharing everything I will share to have a sort of review or refresher course or test review like we do in school. I believe that everything I'm going to share with you is absolutely essential. And know that the point is not to present ideas to you that you would automatically assume as your own ideas, but instead to get you to start asking the right questions about what this all means to you. That it would spark a movement in you that will eventually lead you to a settling of the very foundational things we believe. And hopefully one day we will know God's truth from man's interpretation of it. Tonight's message is called Christianity. All or nothing. This message has been inspired by C.S. Lewis, my mom, my dad, my family, my struggle, among other things, in a time where I myself have wrestled with these truths. The message breakdown will be this. This is just to help you out a little bit. Christianity. What it is, what we do with it, how we do it, and what happens in us when we do what we're supposed to do with it. For the sake of understanding, we will start at the very beginning. We will start with the definition of the word Christian. What is a Christian? The word definition with which the word Christian was created has been lost. We can talk about first what it means today. In a very practical way, what the word Christian means today, if you say this person is a Christian or that person is a Christian, practically what you are saying, what it means to the general populace is a good person. That's really what we mean by that. When we say, oh, that person's a Christian, it's not specifically that we know that we know what that person believes, but maybe we know that that person comes to church or that they don't participate in certain activities. Do you guys know what I'm saying? To the effect that if you see a person in school who maybe you thought in your head was Christian and then you see them smoking marijuana behind the bleachers, you say, oh, that person's not a Christian. Yes or no? Or you see somebody who's in a situation where they could have done something very wrong and indeed they said, no, 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 I'm not going to do that. Then you say, hey, maybe they did that because that person is a Christian. The way we use the term Christian in our generation, people who do good things, let's say, are Christians, and people who do bad things are not Christians. Well, the word was never meant for this. The actual meaning of the word Christian actually comes up first in the New Testament. And it means someone who believes the doctrines of Christianity, the life of Christ, and believes them to be true. So a Christian man is not a good man. I mean, he could be. And he most definitely should be, but they do not mean the same thing. 
what happens here is a kind of word atrophy. What we do in our language is we take the meaning of one word and we assign it to a different word that already had a meaning. And the result is, then, there are two words or phrases that mean the same thing, but no word assigned to the original meaning of the first word. A Christian is one who takes as true all the Christian doctrines, all of them, one who believes, and I might add, and continues on believing in spite of circumstance, uncomfort, and emotion. Next, Christianity. What is Christianity? Simply, Christianity is what Christians do. I mean, that's a quote for the record books right there. Christianity is what Christians do. But, what do Christians do? Or, what is Christianity? Christianity is dressing up as Christ in the hopes of, in the end, actually becoming Him. It is putting on Christ, His life, his righteousness, etc., in order that we may become a little Christ and share in the life that He has. The foundational truth behind what Christianity is, is the Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. The Son of God became a man to enable men to become sons of God. In fact, the cornerstone of Christian theology, so to speak, is, drumroll please, we can become sons of God. I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, we can become sons of God. One more time. We can become sons of God. But what exactly does this mean? You may be thinking right now, sons of God. Aren't we all sons of God? Aren't we all God's children? Maybe that's what you're thinking, right? Like, for God so loved the little children, and that's all of us. And so, you know, Adam and Eve, and somebody had to sleep with somebody's sister, and now we're all brothers, right? And we're all children of God. That's maybe what you're thinking. But let us go a little bit. I mean, it's true.